when I was receiving a lot of different messages on LinkedIn and everybody was you know, asking for a job, asking for this, and I didn't provide jobs. So I was frustrated. So I reached out to LinkedIn, I wrote them, and I still have that email. I made a post on it even after I received that email. So I wrote to LinkedIn, I said that I'm receiving you know, diff different messages. Am I obliged to reply to every single message that I receive on LinkedIn? And they came back saying no. This is not an obligation. You can delete, you can remove, you can ignore, or you can simply archive the message. So don't feel it as a burden that everybody uh, you have to connect with. It's your account. I mean, you have to take it to see. For example, for my account, I have limited. I don't connect with people on LinkedIn. I'm more towards content and value sharing using those tools. I spend more time there rather than connecting people so I don't talk on this platform. So my focus, my, you know, I'm very driven to some other goal. There are people who are more, uh, you know, interested, they are more open to building network. Okay. So eventually you will reach to those people. You know, there's 675 million plus people out there. So there's a huge, huge, uh, you know, audience. Uh, so for me, yes, I, I'm opposite because my audience, yeah. I want their money or I want to help them get a job or I want to uh, grow my network from them passing my success or the, the good work with them to the next person. So you have a maximum of 30,000 connections and more than once that you're, you're blocked, you can own, not blocked, but you can't accept more, okay? So you need to be strategic in who you can say yes or no to. But then what can you do with those people you have connected with? Yes, another question, please. Just follow on the, the question. Um, so are you aware of the algorithm with LinkedIn? So once, like, let's say you accept an invitation from a head of IT, which you don't believe you have like, anything to synergize with, um, is LinkedIn, if you accept, is LinkedIn automatically going to send you more of this? So. In a, in a way, do you need to funnel your your connection in whatever serves you better? So, I will, but we can both answer. But the algorithm changes. So today, yes, but then in one week time, we don't know what the algorithm is. So there's no there's no answer. Okay. Yeah. Plus, also LinkedIn algorithm, uh, you know, uh, they keep on changing. Plus also, LinkedIn algorithm will not send you the connection invite. It's the person who is sending. So every invite you, you receive is, is sent by the person well, themselves. Okay, for the, yeah, for the suggestions, it's also based on your activity. For, for example, if you are more, you know, in, in uh, commenting in LinkedIn groups or you have joined more technology groups, you are connecting with different people who are writing about IT posts. So LinkedIn algorithm, their intelligence is so is so strong. And that's where it becomes very powerful as compared to other social media platform. So it, it uh, you know, uh, it picks what kind of content interests you and it gives you that relevant information. So that was the breakthrough for me when I realized, you know, about this thing, how to stay more on the radar, how to grab everybody. So the moment you sign in, and then, so you, the first post they want to see, which I want them to see, is about about myself. That's my next question. It's the same <laughs> settings you mentioned in the settings. You can maybe tailor it, or or uh, in a way that um, you send in or you receive the content you want to see and and be more present. Yes. Uh, yeah. All right. So for that, I give you a, you know settings again itself is a whole maybe an hour talk, but I can give you just uh, one quick tip here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, with your newsfeed, once you are in your LinkedIn, once you have signed in, in your LinkedIn newsfeed account, uh, sorry, newsfeed section, any post that you see, on the top side, on the right top side, you'll see there are three dots. All right, so you click it. Even in your mobile phone, you can do that. So you click on those three dots, any post, and then you'll see there is a section that says, improve my news feed or improve my experience okay so you click there it will take you to another section take you to the next page where you can actually tell LinkedIn what type of content that you should be following what kind of hashtag that you should follow all right and also if a person you think like this content is is uh, you know not relevant to you you and you don't want to disconnect the person so LinkedIn is giving you both options that you can remain in 
has a first degree connection, but he, on his profile you can simply unfollow that person. So you will not get, yeah, so you will not view their uh, posts, uh, you know. Uh, for example, sometimes there was a, a, a real incident that uh, I posted a guitar video way back two, two years back, and there was a comment. A person said that, uh, sir, you know, I thought your content is very valuable, but uh, I'm afraid. And sorry to say, but, you know, such type of content is for Facebook. And I was like, uh, you know, but it's okay. There, there are, so you are just one out of those 70,000 viewers, you know. And, and so I should not stop posting my guitar videos just because you have told me that this content is for uh, Facebook. But what about the guitarists? What about the guitar companies who are on this platform? What about the musicians on this platform? Of course, they have to share their own talent. So you're a public speaker, you'll share your training gigs. All right, so, um, so, so I did not get um, uh, offended, but there are people, you know, who will come and they will try to take over you, but that comment, so I, he said that I am going to, uh, you know, uh, unfollow you. So, so I realized he still wants to be in contact with me, meaning as a first degree connection, you still can send message to each other. But if he would have disconnected with me, okay, then if he would have sent a connection request, then it's on my discretion if I would like to accept it or not. So it's, uh, you can help uh, yourself just by going to improve your news feeds so that you get to see the content which is relevant to you. We will take one last more questions, but we have a lot. Okay, so let's take the three questions and then after it will be networking, but let's take those three questions, please. So, yes, uh, so I was told by a person to like and comment a certain number every day. So I'm shown in their networks, my connections. But I'm worried if I just start liking and commenting on every, uh, any, uh, anyone, I might start getting uh, irrelevant news feeds. So is this true or how to enhance? Yeah, so that's the part where it comes your engagement with this, the platform LinkedIn, okay? So the first question would be from my side is like, why you have to even like somebody's post? There, there has to be a reason either it is because you, you really like that person's content. For example, I know my community, so the moment I post something, they are like likes, okay? The reason why, because they know so I'm sharing something which is valuable. So they are like blindfolded now which I mean like I have, um, I've made myself, you know, over time by sharing a lot of content. So if you are like liking someone's post, why you are liking, uh, you know, their, their post? So for me, it would be like to understand. Second, you also have to be aware that you should not be appear as a bot. Okay, as a, uh, you know, those bots who would do the work for you. There are some third party tools and you'll just sit relaxed back and you are actually sleeping eight hours, but your bot is working going like this post, like this post, like this post, just to be on the radar, which will have two consequences. One thing is, if it appears to be a spam, you, your account might be at risk. Point number two, uh, I reached out to LinkedIn, um, asking them if I can use some third party tools to schedule my posts, because I do a lot of content sharing. And to, to my best knowledge as of now, I still have to check the emails. So they came back saying they also were like, in 50-50. So they did not give me a clear answer, like yes you can use it or no you, you should not use it. So even there are different platforms available, Hootsuite, Buffer, that you can use for a range of different purposes, but they did not give me a clear answer. Now, for your engagement, liking and commenting, it does help you outstand in your number and outperform your engagement. But if you are, let's say, an Emirati here in the UE and your network is, uh, you know, uh, because you were born and brought up in the US and, and then you moved eventually to the you know, Emirates. So out of your 15,000 connections, if you have 12, 13,000 connections who are based out in the US, so it makes no sense if you are liking during your daytime when actually it's the nighttime in the US where your 70 or 80 percent of your audience is sleeping right now. Because nobody would then engage in, in the post where you have engaged, so it will not accept. Uh, in a way that it will not boost that person's post, okay? If you have to get more visibility, so I would suggest that you comment rather like. You can like, but then when you add a comment, it stays there. And if you are commenting and your comment gets the maximum likes, 
it stays with the with the post itself. And it doesn't trigger automatically Okay, so for this thing, so if you are engaging in other sports, uh, you know, again, this is based on personal experience, which we had about two and a half years ago. Um, so the content of the groups, we were, or the people we were, you know, uh, starting, uh, we, we were writing contents, and there were friends from all over different parts of the world, but I was receiving the content which was, let's say, not relevant to me, or I thought that I should not be engaging in such type of content, because I was investing my time for something I should not achieve. So I realized at that point of time. So I focused, so I shifted my focus towards my content sharing to come up and, and, and stand on my feet, plus also to see the relevant content so that also I can, you know, um, not only to add value, plus also when you add the content, when you add the comments, you also grab the attention of others who have commented on that post, and that's how you drive your profile business as well, on your profile. It's a, it's a journey, I would say, it's a complex thing which will not happen, like, and you learn the experience. With you, for example, like if you are commenting on Gary Vee's post, who has, let's say, maybe comments, 4,000 comments, so maybe you have a, a better chance that maybe out of 4,000 people who have commented, maybe once you will comment, Umar has commented, maybe out of 4,000, maybe 40 people will be notified that a new comment has been posted. Now if you come to, for example, my post, let's say there are um, five comments, and if you would make a comment, okay, maybe only two will be notified, you know, or maybe three will be notified. So the post themselves, how you're going to cherry pick those posts, where you're where going to engage in those, uh, what, what kind of posts, you know, influencers post, posts with maximum engagement, posts with certain content that you have to engage in. So I think it, it's, it's a good experience to begin with. Uh, very quickly, uh, my name is Simon, and I moved to UAE uh, six months ago. Uh, so I've moved to a transition in uh, different regions and geographies, uh, first in England, then in the US, then back in India, and then in England. Uh, the biggest challenge I have here is people always try and ask me or try and find out, find out what the common, common connects you have with you. So now we just start off consultancy from the end of the And the first thing I get feedback is how do local business owners do uh, Are they connected before I start opening up my coach to you? And I feel that's um, increasingly frustrating because I'm missing an opportunity to give them the value of what we can actually provide. Real advice or more help to me as to how do I put Trying to be as quick as possible to not be the lowest person if you're not having a common connection, that we still can help them. Yeah, very good question. Thank you. Um, I think it would just be the way you would address them to, to maybe not be so direct in saying no, but think roundabout ways of what you do have and what tools you can facilitate to implement and, and help with. So, for example, maybe you would have mutual connections that you could introduce them to. Uh, for example, maybe you could find some networking events that you could uh, be interested in, in to be attending to link to. So try to focus on things and, that you do have, the tools that you can implement, um, to suggest ways to then facilitate their growth, or you know, tools that you can implement, I guess. Does this answer the question? Hang on, yeah. My major concern here is the integrity right now, which I feel in the creative platform and the social uh, platform is who do you know and come with me uh, in an open door to you or in an investment table, a conversation for you with ease? Uh, because right now we have people on LinkedIn and everybody doesn't want to be at the same time with everybody. So that's the kind of challenge I'm having, especially when I'm here. And how do you know the importance of the 1% of people in this community? Yes, absolutely agree. I've been there. I, I have. Um, I will just give one answer and I'll let you hear us in the video answer. But um, group chats, for example, they're a great, great way to introduce. So you can have 
you can open up the inbox and you can create a group chat for each of them too that you that you're interested to to integrate or to introduce each other. But it takes time. It doesn't. It's not one conversation. I mean, my inbox is for hundreds of people. So if you do the same thing, you'll get lost. So take time. It may even be a couple of weeks, but to create relationships. And this is how the LinkedIn works. So be noticed by commenting, liking, inboxing them frequently on their page, set the notifications up so that the key personnel pops up into your feed when they make a post so that then you can become visible. I myself, I, I would uh, reach out to someone if they have shared my content. So maybe after two shares of a post, I would go to them and say, thank you so much, how can I help you? So if you become visible, then they're more likely to engage business with you. Yeah. And another thing you can do is to reach out to more locals. Um, you can join different LinkedIn groups. So because even if you are sending the invites to, let's say, you know, people in the EU region and you are targeting certain nationality, let's say you are reaching out to more Emirati than you want to be connected with them. So there are different groups on LinkedIn which you can join in one of the biggest, I believe, the, uh, with the name. So you can just search with the name um, Emiratis or em Emiratization. Yeah. And then once you get inside the group, so let's say there are 25,000 members inside the group, and you have the advantage because of the group that you share the common group, you can send them a one on one message, a direct message, without being uh, as a first meeting connection. So this is the biggest advantage uh, or, or, or the chat where you can find uh, more in your office. Yeah, and uh, apart from that, you can you know, follow different hashtags. For example, this, let's say one hashtag is like, I'm just saying, it, let's say hashtag Dubai government. Now, I cannot write about Dubai government, maybe I, I don't work in Dubai government, or maybe I don't have much information about their, uh, their products or their services, or what kind of business plans they have. But maybe, for example, if you go on uh, Sheikh uh, Muhammad, Hamdan's, his LinkedIn profile, he's sharing very consistently with different people. So, once you go on his profile, in the comments, you see there are a lot of Emiratis who are engaging in these uh, posts. So, yeah. And then you can do three things. I mean, I can go on and on. So, once you can see Sheikh Hamdan's post, there are like 8,000 comments. And then you see majority that it would be from uh, Emiratis. So you open one person, okay, and you see if there is any mutual connection. The first thing. So you, you don't send a direct invite. So you can take how you take advantage of the mutual connection to start initiating that conversation. Number two, what you can do if you have a LinkedIn premium account, you can send them a direct message. But here again it depends how you're going to talk. How you can initiate now? If you're going to send a message, hi, this is you know just want all about your stuff. Now, when I used to uh, do this LinkedIn Premium here, is a tip maybe for job seekers or, or anybody who wants to use the LinkedIn Premium. It's because uh, you have to write a message in a way that you need to get your credit back. So the moment other person replies to your LinkedIn Premium message or like that, you know, you get your credit back. So you get your one email back. So on monthly you have five. The moment you get the reply back, you get your credit back. So I would write like, you know, uh, what's your name? Sorry. Sorry. So I would write like, uh, hi, do you say, um, uh, would you be open to discuss an opportunity? Uh, looking forward to your reply. Thank you. Okay. So now this is something which is very vague. Okay. So you might need to know the, oh, what is the opportunity. But I I need to crack that wall so that we can have a chat because also I can get the credit back. And then from from their moment onward, then, then we, so that opportunity is like, I'm going to serve myself, I'm going to add the value, how I need to initiate that conversation. I want to give a quick sales pitch here because Risha has kindly put together in our packages these types of emails. I have either personally myself, I can create it, or I do have content writers who, would, who have effective community email communications. So it's in one of the packages that we offer. I think this. I think this is really important because uh, you know, like the real example, maybe 